Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to be showing you how to draw eyes from different angles. I'm dividing this up into a few different parts. So this video is going to focus on eyes that are facing forward and looking up and down. And let's get started. So I think the first eyes that we're going to draw would be eyes that are looking up. So the reference that I am using, the person is kind of tilting their head back a little bit and looking up. So in that case, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to draw both eyes here, I think. So I'm just going to start with kind of a line to indicate where they're at. So they're on the same plane. And uh, one thing that I'm noticing about these eyes is the lower eyelid is almost a straight line. It's very close. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to divide up this line that I have into thirds because if you've watched my facial proportions video, your eyes are exactly one eye width apart. So we have one eye, one eye. This is where your nose is, but that is the same distance as the length of an eye. So that would give us the placement of our eyes here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of start with the lower eyelid. I'm not going to draw it super dark in case I need to make any changes, but also what I'm noticing as I'm looking at this image is this person's lower eyelid is pretty light actually. The only area that's darker is where we see some eyelashes. So there's a slight downward curve towards the tear duct and it kind of curves up just a little bit here. And then towards the outer edge, it curves down just a little bit. So one thing we want to remember as we are drawing eyes is to remember that your eye is a three-dimensional object. So if I were to draw the eyeball itself, you know, it's round. We'll just pretend that we have x-ray vision. Uh, this is how I start in my how to draw an eye video. Also, that's just a throwback. All the OG videos. <laughs> um, yeah, so like say your eyeballs are right here. Um, they're round. They're spherical. So um, your eyelids wrap around them. And I think that's a really important thing to remember as you are drawing them. Um, is to understand that sort of volume. That's going to help you as you are drawing them. Um, so as I'm working on the upper eyelid, some things I want to take into account is where is the highest point on the curve of the eyelid. So I am noticing it's close to the center, slightly off to the side. So that's where I'm going to see the highest arch. And then it's going to curve down to form the tear duct shape here on the inside. And I notice the lower eyelid kind of sticks out further than the shadow of the upper eyelid. So that's something I'm going to need to keep in mind when I am drawing it or shading it later. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is usually the hardest part is drawing both eyes. You know, one's not so bad. And usually we always draw on the one side that's easier to start with. And then we get to the second one. We're like, oh, no, I've forgotten how to draw. <laughs> and then, you know, you just struggle. And that's part of life. You know, the more you do it, the easier it gets, obviously. Practice. That's how you get better at things. It doesn't just happen. But usually what I like to do is just kind of create a parallel line from my first line. And I realize this is a little short. So I will take my kneaded eraser, make a little point with it. I'm just going to raise that up just a little bit more. And you know, some of this refining stuff can happen later too, but it's good to get stuff mostly in the right place as you begin working. I feel like this is almost too round here, so I need to kind of cut that in just a little bit. It's more angular, I think. I feel like I'm going for uh, those 
sort of baroque religious images where they all have like really round like droopy eyes. I've always liked those. I think they're fun. <laughs> they're just so expressive. They look like they've never slept. Okay, here we go. All right, so I got the basic opening of the eyes. Um, from here, I'm going to do the irises. So that is the colored part of the eye and they are looking up. So what's going to be kind of interesting here is if you remember your iris and your pupil, they're round. Um, the pupil is in the center of the iris, uh, but it's at an angle. So we have some kind of foreshortening happening here. So it's not quite a circle. It's more of an oval. So, and then just kind of sketch that out. You want to kind of think about the negative space. So the white of the eye in this case would be our negative space. So how much of that white of the eye are we seeing when we do this? So if I were to finish drawing this circle, it would, you know, kind of flatten out up there. So we're pretending that we can see through it again. Helpful. And same with the pupil. The pupil is more of a ellipse in this case. Um, and that is in the center of this circle, even though it's going back in space. So it's a little more uh, flattened. And that changes, you know, just depending on the angle we're looking at. So that's really going to look different when we're looking at the eye from the side too. So, um, if you want to think about it this way, we have these sort of axes going across the eye, right? That make it round like a basketball. I'm just drawing a basketball on here. I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be, but you know, I think it's helpful to understand volume when you're drawing because it helps your stuff look more round. So, you know, obviously you don't need to draw all that stuff. I'm just showing you that it exists. <laughs> um, that's another thing is I feel like sometimes it's helpful to start by drawing all of those guiding lines and everything uh, because, you know, as you're learning, it makes it easier. Um, but once you do it all the time, you don't really need to keep doing it. You can skip steps once it becomes easier for you. All right, so let's draw the second one and make it the same as the other one. So challenging. Is it the same? That's another thing I recommend if you're trying to draw two of the same thing. Always take a step back. Like, look at it from further away because it's going to help you find inconsistencies a lot faster than looking at it up close. Like, I'm totally blind, and <laughs> not literally, but I have very poor eyesight. And so, like, I tend to work on my drawings while looking really closely at them. So, like, my face is usually, you know, like a foot from my drawing, uh, which is why my head usually tends to, like, peek in over the camera. That's ridiculous. I forget. It's because I'm like, oh, I can't see. I'll get closer. And then I'm like, oh, my head is blocking this entire shot. Now I have to redo it. <laughs> um, you know, so for me especially, I feel like I need to really be aware of taking a step back and, and focusing on those sorts of things because it's important. Um, yeah, things might look really good up close. And then you back up and you're like, oh, dear, that is horrific. I don't even know what's going on there. Um, <laughs> and that happens more frequently than you would think, especially with me. Okay, so now we got our eyelids drawn in. Um, there's like a little indicator of the lower eyelid, kind of a little bit of a wrinkles of, you know, maybe needs a cucumber mask, if you will. Uh, <laughs> Then here we have just, I'm just going to indicate some eyebrows. We can worry about fabulous on fleek eyebrows later. We just got some eyebrows. Uh, 
So the brow line here, um, you know, overhangs the eye and, you know, causes some shadow under here, whereas it sticks out further at the arch of the eyebrow, which is going to give us more of a highlight there. So yeah, as you're drawing these things, you want to think about like the anatomy of the skull and how that creates light and shadow, which makes a big difference in your drawings. All right, so here we have kind of where the brow bone comes around the nose. This is usually just all in shadow. Yeah, okay, so from here, I'm gonna speed things up, I'm gonna shade. So this is basically our um, indicators of those main structural forms on the eye. The rest to create the volume and everything is shading. So we'll speed it up a little bit. All right, so I'm not really feeling the blending stump today. I'm, I kind of like this sketchy look, so I think I am going to just say this is awesome, except that I forgot to add these eyelashes. What was I thinking? Get those eyelashes in there. I knew I was missing something. How could I possibly forget that? All right, so eyes looking up, usually the the lower eyelid is going to be a little flatter just due to the angle it's at. Um, and then the iris is kind of become an ellipse, so an oval shape. It's flattened out just a little bit. All right, let's move on. All right, so this next one we're going to do is looking down. So in this image, we're not necessarily looking completely down in that it looks like the eyelids are closed. So there's a little sliver open still at this point. So what I'm gonna do is same thing I did in the last one. We're gonna divide it into thirds to keep that same proportion correct. All right, so that should be correct. Almost. All right. And what I notice in this image is there's, I don't know, a very nice kind of like sweeping curved line that creates the edge of the upper eyelid. It's really subtle. I feel like it's almost straight across, but there's some like soft curves happening towards the edges, which is pleasant. So the same sort of idea happens whenever we're drawing in the eyes. We want to think about, you know, the eyeball sitting in the socket. So like, how is that eyelid itself curving around the eyeball. Um, obviously those aren't the best circles, but you know, I'm gonna erase them. It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, so now what I'm looking at here is I want to see like what parts of the eyelid curve down, what parts kind of curve up, and then we're going to compare that to the lower eyelid. So I feel like the lowest part is near the center and then it curves up. Actually, I can't really even see the end of that curve because of eyelashes being in the way. So I won't draw it. If you can't see it, you don't need to draw it. Pretty sure that's how I uh, got away with never drawing hands when I was younger. They were always in pockets <laughs> or behind the back because hands are hard. But then again, you know, people do the same thing with eyes. You just draw sunglasses and then you don't have to see them. <laughs> okay, so just the rough indication of where 
our eyelids are here. And now the creases. So I've noticed kind of a general shape like we see on that circle, basically. It's almost the same. Um, it's a little more angular than a circle, but kind of follows the, the edge of the skull and the eyeball in the anatomy. Um, the creases kind of go across that, but the shadow shows us the curve here. So we'll get to the shadow eventually. Um, then let's see the lower eyelid. Because the eyes are looking down, we are going to see a bit more of a defined crease here because it's pushing on the skin. Um, and that's mostly shading. It's not too much of like a hard line. The creases on this eye are a little more defined than the other side. I think the lighting is just a little bit harder over here. Okay. I know they look very old right now, but this is a young person and it will change once I start shading. Um, then we just see kind of the irises here. So remember they're round, so you would draw like a whole circle if you were to continue it. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing to notice as you are drawing the iris is to think about how much of that circle is overlapped by the top eyelid, how much is overlapped by the lower eyelid. That's going to help you figure out how much of the curve you're going to see here. So that's something to think about. Um, and then, you know, the eyelashes are really like covering a majority of this area. So we don't quite see much of the anatomy in that corner. All right, so this person's eyes are pretty dark, so I actually can't really see their pupil. So I'm not gonna draw it. I mean, if I wanted to be very hyper-realistic, I would probably choose a better reference photo where I would see more detail there. But in this case, I don't have that. So draw what you see, right? So let's begin our shading. Alrighty, so here we have eyes looking down. So in this case, we're going to see a lot more of the upper eyelid um, and it's kind of almost flattened out from the angle that it is sitting at. We're going to see more of a crease at the lower eyelid and much less of the white of the eye just due to the angle that it's sitting at. Um, we're going to see more highlights kind of at the brow bone and the top of the upper eyelid because that is the furthest protruding on the face. And yeah, generally we still want to continue to have a little bit of a curve in the eyelid just to indicate some volume. So those are a couple angles from the front view. And stay tuned for my next videos on drawing eyes from different angles from profile views and three-quarter views. Thanks for watching and keep creating.